Hello everyone. In this video, we're going to explore the power of function calling with OpenAI. And we're going to use function calling to build an AI assistant that can access and analyze real-time data and provide answers to our questions in a nice user interface. This particular example is finance related, analyzing stock price data and company financials. But the principles we cover here can be applied to any domain. My last video was a tutorial covering the fundamentals and basic implementation of function calling. This is where you should start if you want to learn the basics. I provided a link to the video in the description below. Function calling gives LLMs access to tools which allow them to interact with the world outside of their internal environment. This is the code for my last video. What I'm going to do is just toggle the function calling off. Then I'm going to run this and ask a simple question. What is the current stock price of Microsoft? And we can see here the model is replying by saying that it can't answer the question because it doesn't have real-time capabilities to check the current stock price or any live data. LLMs in their native form are confined to their internal environments. This means that it can't access any data or interact with the outside world. But now I'm gonna to toggle the function calling back on, rerun this, and I'll ask it the exact same question. Now here you can see that it called a tool, getStockPrice, which is a function that I wrote, and it was able to use this tool to get the current real-time stock price of Microsoft and provide an answer to the question. Tools are basically just functions, and if I go to my tools.py module, I've created two functions here, get stock price, which gets a current stock price with a symbol and then get weather. Now, right now this application doesn't do anything interesting because these tools are just for test purposes, but I'm gonna change that in just a few moments. Function calling is when I'm letting the model know that I have these functions available. And I do that with this tools parameter that I add to the API call. So in here, I'm specifying the name of the function, what it does, um, and then also the parameters that it's expecting that I'll need to execute the function. So function calling does two things. It determines which tools or functions the model needs in order to respond to the user query. And then it also provides the parameters that those functions need in order to be executed. Okay, we're gonna fix this application so that it can actually access real-time data. I'm gonna rewrite these functions. Uh, first thing I'm gonna do is just delete the functions in my tools.py module. I'm going to import some libraries. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create three tools. And all of these tools are going to access a financial API called FMP Cloud. And this is where we're going to get real-time stock price and financial data for public companies. And in order to access this API, we'll need an FMP API key. And I'm storing this in my .env file. The first tool is just going to be this get current stock price, which takes the symbol. It's just going to get the current real-time stock price, similar to before, only this is going to be real data. I'll test this out in the interactive window and get the stock price for Microsoft. And we can see here, it just returns this price here. So that's correct. The second tool I'm gonna to create here is called get stock price array. So this is similar, but it's gonna get all of the stock prices for a particular company between a start date and an end date. I can test it out here and ask it to get me the stock prices for NVIDIA between January 1st, 2023 and January 1st, 2024. And you can see that it returns this array with all of the dates and all of the respective stock prices. And then finally, the third function that I'm going to create is called get financials. So this is going to get select financial, real time financial data for a particular company. I can run this function for with the symbol for Amazon. And then the data it's going to give me is, is gonna look something like this. It's the quarterly and annual financial data, things like cash, revenue, earnings, margins, 
And all of this should be up to date. So if a company releases financial results today, then this should be the current financial results of that company. Okay, so now we have our three tools. And then one more thing I'm gonna do is just add this decorator function at the top of my module. And by putting these decorators in front of all of these functions, I'm just gonna make sure that they all output uh, strings, which is the correct type that OpenAI is expecting. Okay, so that completes my tools module. Now I'm going to go back to my main.py file and I'm gonna to have to make a few changes here. Um, from tools, I'm going to import all three of those functions, get current stock price, get stock price array, and get financials. And then I'm gonna to have to make some adjustments to the here tools parameter, uh, which essentially tells the LLM what types of functions I have available. So this tools parameter, this is a list, but this gets added to the API call that we're making to OpenAI. So in the response here, client chat dot completions create, we can see here that we add the tools as one of the parameters. So I'm just gonna provide the correct information for each one of my new tools. So we can see here it has the, the function name for this one, get current stock price, a description of what the function does. So this is important because this is what the LLM is using to determine which function to call or if it needs to call a function. Also the description for the parameter of this function is important because that's how the LLM is gonna know how to set up the, the data properly so that we can execute the function. We can see down here in get stock price array, um, start date, end date. Um, I'm specifically indicating how this data should be formatted in order to be inputted into the function. And of course, indicating which parameters are required. And then we also have this set up properly now for our get financials function too. Okay. Uh, another thing I'm going to have to do is modify this function, execute function call. So this is what we're actually going to use to execute the tools um, based on the information that we get back from the LLM. So, so this takes a tool object as, as the parameter and this will have the information about which function the LLM is calling and as well the data that it, the LLM is providing as the parameter for the function. So I just need to update this tools map, which essentially allows us to map the string name of the function to the actual function that we're importing. So get current stock price, and we imported the function get current stock price, get stock price array, and then also get financials. And that looks good. And then finally, I'm also going to want to create a system message for the model. So the system message is essentially instructing the model how to act. I'm going to create a new file called system instruction. And this is basically just gonna give the model instructions on what its role is, its responsibilities, goals, how to handle some of the data. It's a fairly detailed system instruction. I'm also gonna provide it with the current date so we can load the system instruction here into this variable. And then I'm also going to import the date time library and get the current date and then add this into the system instruction. Okay, good. Oh, and then I also have to add the system instruction into the messages. Role is system and content is just the system instruction. So as I discussed in my previous video, this messages list is just a running log of the conversation that we continue to provide to the model so that it has a memory of the conversation. And the first item in this messages list will be the system instruction for the model, which gives it a role, gives it a persona, essentially tells it how to act and how to deal with the data. So I'll save this, I will open a terminal and we can test this out, python main.py. Great, so why don't I start with something simple? Uh, what is the current stock price of Microsoft? Great, so it's 
calling this tool get current stock price that's what we want and then it's replying with the current stock price of microsoft is 42103 and if i go to yahoo finance you can see that that's exactly correct 42103 is the current price you can ask it another question um what was the average stock price of microsoft in 2022 so here it's calling the tool get stock price array it's performing some calculations and it's giving us the answer here that the average stock price in 2022 was 251 dollars which sounds about correct try something a little more complicated provide an analysis of the historic growth and profitability of alphabet so this is calling the get financials and the get stock price array tools. And then we can see here it provides an analysis of alphabet, historic growth and profitability, significant growth in revenue and profitability. And then it provides some of the figures here like revenue growth, uh, profitability metrics, margins. And then the summary here, alphabet has demonstrated impressive revenue growth. Um, so this, this looks pretty good. and. You know, really, again, this is a finance related application the way it's designed, but this is just an, an example of how an LLM can interact with data, real time data using tools. And of course, tools can do more than just get real time data. Tools can also take other actions in the world. Essentially, anything that you can code up as a function could potentially be a tool and this could be applied to any domain. So this is interesting. Maybe I'll just try one more. Compare Alphabet's historic growth and profitability with Tesla. And then here we have essentially a very intra, a very well formatted uh, comparison of these two companies with real time financial data. So there's key financial ratios, stock price overview, uh, a lot of information here, and then a conclusion at the bottom we can go on with other examples but this is just a really great example of how llms can allow people to interact with data and information in a very different way but i do want to take this application just uh, one step further rather than doing this inside the terminal i'd like to wrap this in a nice user interface the way we're going to do that is with a python library called streamlit for people not familiar with Streamlit, it makes it super easy to build and deploy user interfaces using only Python. I'll need to install the Streamlit library and also another library called Streamlit Extras. Once this is done, I can import the libraries into my main.py file. I don't have to make any changes to the code up here. The tools parameter is going to remain the same. Uh, the execute function call GPT endpoint. Those will remain the same, but down here in run conversation. So basically I'm going to have to take all of this out and I'm going to put it into a new function called process user input. This function process user input takes two parameters. The first parameter user input is this just the message or the input from the user. And then the messages parameter, this is the list that keeps track of all the messages exchanged between the user and the model in the conversation. What this function does is it handles all the API calls and function calling with OpenAI. It produces and returns the response from the model to the user's input. And then it also appends that response to the messages list. I'm going to add another function called render content. What this function is going to do is take the content or the model response as input and render it onto the chat screen. And it also has LaTeX support so that mathematical symbols and diagrams can be rendered more visually. I'll have to import the regular expressions library. Now I can start writing the streamlet code and create the user interface. This isn't going to be an in-depth tutorial on Streamlit. I just want to demonstrate how with a few lines of code, you can create a nice user interface for some of these chatbots or applications. I'll start by creating these two functions, which set up the Streamlit page with a header and also set up a sidebar. Now I'll create the function run conversation, which is where the conversation will happen. And I'll just render these two Streamlit components. 
So if I save this, and I can run this by just typing streamlit run main.py in the terminal. And this is what we have so far with that little bit of code. But now we need to integrate the assistant into this interface. Okay, the next thing I'm going to do here is initialize the chat history. And the way I had this before is I was initializing the chat history up here with this messages list, but I don't need this anymore. I'm going to use streamlit session state, and this will just allow me to store this information. The session state is for persistence of certain data that you're going to need. You don't want it to basically reset every time the application is rerun. And this is where we're going to initialize the messages with the system instruction. Next, I'm going to display all of the messages that are in the conversation currently. And I'm going to use the render content function so that it renders it nicely in the chat screen. Then I'm going to add the form that the user is going to use to submit queries or questions. And the user submission will be appended to the messages list in the session state. I'll send the user's message along with the conversation history to the model to get a response using the process user input function. And I'll also put this inside of a streamlit spinner. Then finally, I can render the model's response on the chat page using the render content function. And I'll append that response to the chat history. Now this should be ready for me to test. I'll just open up my terminal again here. Streamlit run main.py. And there we are with very little code, I have a nice user interface that I can use to test my application. Let's go ahead and do this. I'll start by asking the assistant to compare the net profit margin trends of Nvidia and Apple. As we can see, the assistant retrieves the necessary data, calculates the margins for each company, and then provides a summary that directly answers the question. The summary says that Nvidia's margin has experienced more fluctuations, although it spiked recently, while Apple's margins have shown more consistency. I'd say that's an accurate assessment. I'm going to try one more example, and this time I'll make it more complicated. I'll ask the assistant to rank the mega cap seven companies based on financial performance metrics like growth, profit margins, and consistency. The assistant provides a write-up for the task, and there's a lot going on here behind these scenes with the function calling. First, it needs to identify which companies fall into the Mega Cap 7 group. I didn't provide this information, so the assistant uses its original training data to figure out which companies fall into the group, and then figure out the symbols for these companies. It then provides those symbols in the function calls so we can use them as parameters to get all the necessary information, return it back to the model, the model may perform additional calculations on top of that and then compare the metrics side by side and then finally arriving at the answer. This is a complex question and there's really no single right answer and that's what makes it so interesting to see how the model approaches solving it. But the assistant does provide its rationale for these rankings so the user can always review that logic and then engage with the assistant in follow-up questions. There are many, many ways to improve this assistant by incorporating more tools, data, and fine-tuning. This approach can be applied to any domain, whether it's healthcare, science, or business. It's truly a revolutionary way of interacting with data by being able to essentially have a conversation with data through an AI assistant. These are all topics we can explore in future videos. If you enjoyed this content, please like the video and subscribe to the channel. I'd love to hear your questions or feedback in the comments section. That's all for now. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for watching.